Welcome back to another episode. My name is Dana, and my guest today is Steve Robert. Hello, Steve. How are you? I'm doing just fine, Dana. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm very excited to talk about your new product today. So before we get get into you know some of the questions I'm going to ask you, why don't you just take a minute and tell us a little bit about you, your company, and a little bit of history, that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. So um, I have an MSP, MSP called Subnet Systems, and we do IT work like many other companies all over the world. We had a problem one time where we got hacked and I had to really sit down and look to see if I was doing enough for my clients. Um, you know, I was kind of lost at the time. Like, I didn't know what to do. I know we had like cybersecurity things like antivirus and email monitoring. You know, it's like you're always wondering, is, is it enough? And at first I grabbed an Excel file and just tackling all of the services that my clients had. And I'm like, there's just still too many questions. So that's when I started doing like cybersecurity risk assessments. And I, I took all the knowledge I had from my CSSP and just Googling things on the internet and compiled a list of questions. Is my client doing this? Are they not? And then giving it a rating. So that was a big issue for me, say in 2019. And I, I knew I needed to solve the problem. And you know what? Actually, tackling cybersecurity that way, I think, is so much easier because when you're talking to a business owner and you're saying, okay, let's go through some of the things you are doing, they can understand that. They can understand. Do you have a password policy? You know, do, who's allowed in, in this? Do you have limited access? All that kind of stuff. But when you start talking all techie talk to them, they don't understand it. And then they just don't even want to have the conversation. So I think that's great that you start up by, you know, let's make a list of things that I can have a conversation and ask them what they're doing. So. Yeah, no, I agree with you too. And uh, you got to be careful with the clients. You know, as, as a technical person, I feel like I have this whole big list of questions and here they are. And if you present that to your client, you might scare them away where you just really need to focus on the high risks and keep it basic for them and then work your way down from, you know, fixing the high risks and then maybe looking at some of the medium risks. Mm -hmm. So you, you took all that stuff, all those questions, all that stuff, and then that's how you developed your product. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about defense in depth and... We know why you started it. So let's talk about a little bit how you created it. Yeah, well, that's right. So I was uh, doing all these next in Excel file and it was kind of messy and I had Excel files all over and templates. And then I just got the idea one time, I'm like, well, why can't I, all this work that I put in for myself, for my MSP, why couldn't I make this available for other people and make this a lot easier? I, I will say another thing too, is that you know, I have multiple clients and they've had third-party audits for different reasons. So I've got to see how other companies sort of did the same thing, but there are, there are challenges. Like it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Like, for example, they were nice enough to provide IT policies. And then we had to customize the, the policies for this assessment they were doing. But then a lot of the controls weren't even in the policies, but they required them to be in there. And I'm like, well, why can't they all be in there? You know what I mean? And it was like, it was a lot of back and forth. And I felt like I was wasting a lot of time and it was frustrating. So it was little things like that that I knew that I could do better um, for for myself and for for this uh, for for defense and depth. So that's what I did with this tools. I made it very customizable. Um, it's very easy to use. It's affordable. Um, again, to touch back on that, every single control that we have is in a policy, so you can either edit it or remove it. It's a lot easier to to remove them than to figure out what to add. And um, I've been using it for my clients for the last few months, and it's just amazing how easy it is to manage all the risks. Like another, for example, I don't have it up here, but if you look at the client dashboard with a list of all your clients, like right beside it shows you the number of risks that are still, that still need to be fixed. So you can get a big high overview of what high risks that need to be fixed right in front and on the dashboard. Yeah, and that's a great thing. So that when you are talking to them, you know, boom, there it is right there. These are the things we still have to address these things. These are, you know, hot, hot um, items. And so it sounds like this tool is a perfect thing for somebody who is in IT and wants to get into cybersecurity, but maybe isn't exactly sure or confident. I know I hear that a lot from a lot of IT people. They're just not really comfortable with themselves about knowing cybersecurity. So it sounds like this would be something that would be very helpful with getting them into that. Well, that's just it, because I was there before. Like I said, like I didn't know what to do. Like, I mean, I knew there was something else I had to do, but then I was just kind of like I was busy doing my work with the MSP. And I really had to spend so much of my own time. I don't even know how many hours I spent just to compile that Excel file. <laughs> I didn't have the time, but I made the time. And I feel like um, what, what I'm trying to do here is to let the other MSPs know that there is a tool we put in the time and all of the controls are there for you. And it's really easy to use. And you spit out these reports 
when their assessment is done and you give them to your clients and it looks very professional, it makes it look like you spent a lot of time, you, you're you very thoughtful, and it's going to go a long way. The other, the other part of it too is if you don't do these assessments and your client gets hacked, well, you know, you, you can't, your client can go back to you and say, well, why didn't we do this? Or why didn't we do that? You know, if the assessment has everything in there, there's not very much that I'm missing. You can even add your own questions if you want. It's very, it's great. And you can add them in the reports. So then, you know, you're kind of saving your butt that if something did happen, you know what I mean? You probably covered it. And maybe your client ignored it or something, right? So this, uh, th this tool is just all around great. Well, and one thing that, that I always say is that the non-technical business owners, they think that if you are in charge of the IT, you're the MSP, you're in charge of our IT, they literally think because you're in charge of the computer that you are going to be in charge of the cybersecurity. And I know from the professional point of view, that sounds very silly, but that's that's definitely what they believe. So it's it's they may think you're already taking care of this stuff, number one, which obviously you're not. But number two, it's also a way that if anything, you know, ever does happen, like you just said, you could say, you know, well, we don't we didn't have this. And now we do have this in place. And I think that's going to be very, very helpful for a lot of these guys that that just want to get into that. And knowing now that people are thinking that you're already taking care of this stuff, I think that uh, it's another way to ex extend your services and also to uh, help protect your customer better. Well, yeah, that's right. And the, what, the one time that we had to pay the ransomware, I was thinking that myself. I was like, okay, my client probably thinks that I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing or I'm not doing everything. So I didn't want them to think that anymore. So that was the whole part of how I started uh, doing the cybersecurity risk assessments and making sure they're done every uh, two years or at least updated. And, uh, and uh, you were saying too at the beginning for, the, for like the executives and the bosses, the, the system allows you to make an executive and a technical report. Technical report is going to include every single control where the um, executive ones will just focus on the risks and you could even attach the risk register to it. And you don't even have to put the low risk because every company is going to have a lot of low risks. But if you just want to focus on the, the high or the medium, you could just put those into the risk register and then send that with the executive report. And then you could talk with the executives and it might be a lot easier. Well, definitely will be a lot easier than sending them the, the technical report and they're going to be like, what the heck is this? Yeah, and then just get ignored because they're not going to understand how, how any of it, uh, what it means or anything like that. Want to expand your IT services into cybersecurity? Defense in Depth has the answer. Produce cybersecurity risk assessments, organizational IT security policies, technical and executive reports with the punch of a button. The solution is professional easy to use and affordable. You determine how many controls to include. Make it as simple or as complex as you need. Cybersecurity has exploded recently. Protect your clients from cyber criminals. Sign up for our free seven day trial. And you know, one thing too, uh, you had mentioned a little bit was that you can tailor this to different requirements. So if somebody wants to go in and do a very, very thorough you know, check they can, or if somebody just wants to do, you know, kind of let's just touch base on some of the basics that people are doing or not doing um, that you can customize that. So let's talk a little bit about that, those features that you can do. Yeah, for sure. So you can hide any of the controls that you want, and then it won't show up in the report, or you can add your own. Now, at the time of this video, we don't have this available, but it's in development where you're going to be able to create your own template. So you can take the, um, the, the risk assessment that you made, say you want to hide a bunch of questions and then you want to add your own, well, you can take that template there and save it as your own and then use those for your clients. And that'll make it a lot easier. Again, the whole point of this tool is to make it customizable and not just be stuck with what Defense and Depth said you had to do, but to like take what we've done already to, to make it easier and save you time and then customize it for yourself, how, how it works for your clients. And this sounds like this is going to be a helpful tool for cyber liability insurance, because I know a lot of companies, they get this huge, now you have to fill out all these specific questions of what you are doing, and everybody has to get their IT department involved because they, they, they can't answer these things. So it's going to make that a lot easier too, that if you wanted to say, okay, we know these are the questions that are going to come up on your cyber liability, we're going to check, 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 be able to check them off like that. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's been a few years now that I've been filling these out on behalf of my clients. And I feel like every time I get a, a new one from my client, they're adding more and more questions or controls that need to be answered. So if those controls have already been remediated, then, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look better to these the cyber liability insurance companies. I was having this discussion not too long ago. I was because you never like when you send these these questionnaires back to the insurance companies, it'd be nice to know like <laughs> how much of a discount they get 
if like some of the controls aren't met because I never hear that. I just send it off to my clients and actually even for my cyber liability, which I think is pretty good for subnet uh, systems, my MSP and defense in depth. Um, I wonder if like, if it was even better, what the premiums would be. Well, you know, and it's funny, it's that now I think they're even getting to the point where when they ask you some of those questions, how you answer them, they may not even offer you cyber liability insurance. I mean, that that's turning into a, a, a such a crazy industry because back in the day, let's even go five years ago, you, they, you didn't have to fill anything out. You just had it because the hacking wasn't as bad as uh, as it is now. So now they're making it really stringent when they send those surveys out that you have to fill out with all the details. And like I said, some of them, when they get the responses back, they don't even want you to have the policy with them. Yeah, for sure. So subnet, I didn't have a problem with the MSP, but defense in depth because of the nature of the business, it was a little trickier actually because it's like going to be a website available to around the world. So that does scare some cyber liability companies. And one challenge they have too is they don't actually prove that you're answering the questions truthfully. Um, you know, I, that's a challenge that they need to get solved in my opinion. Um, another thing I'd like to mention too, which is uh, not a good thing that you have to work on your clients with, is I had a client tell me one time, uh, well, why do we need to do this? I can't remember what we were trying to fix, but it was like, you know, cyber control, like MFA or whatever it was. He's like, well, we have cyber liability insurance. Why do we even need to do this? You know, and it was like such a tough way to look at that because in the cyber liability companies are, they, they don't want to hear that, right? They want you, they want all their clients protected because they don't want to start paying out the premiums. So, you know, the hardest part about this tool and providing the reports to your clients is actually convincing them to fix some of the uh, some of the issues and make it and, and actually getting them to the meeting because doing this report as a technical person it's so easy to use that you can spit it out it's really easy to do the challenge is is working with your clients after some of them in, like are all for it they ask for it and they're like this is great this is professional some of them are just you know they're you, you got to solve their puzzle <laughs> of how to make them think that it's important yeah some of them just want to see your report and glance over and go okay good it looks like you're taking care of everything all right back to business <laughs> yeah, no 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 we got to fix some of the high risks here that just not just a report i mean right if they want to accept all the risks go right ahead in the risk register we have a section where you can put who's the risk owner um sometimes that's it sometimes that's going to be the business owner and then you could put a date that it was accepted mitigated or if it's still in progress so we could still keep track of because like if a client doesn't want to fix anything they said no we're good well you just put that in the risk register that they've accepted the risk it's their business and you've did all that you could and you kind of saved your butt because if anything happened with uh, some of those risks that they didn't want to fix well you have it in your report that you know you tried to help them solve it but they accepted the risk and that's that and that's the biggest thing is when something does happen that's when the blame starts getting tossed around so you know, it's like, oh, no problem, no problem. It doesn't really matter. And then all of a sudden, boom, you know, you have a mess on your hands. And that's when they start going back to the IT person and say, well, we thought that you were doing this, the IT department or whoever's here, their MSP, whoever's de dealing with that. And they want to, you know, cast blame that way. But by you having this, listen, we went over these reports, you know, you, you assumed you took uh, responsibility for this. You said that, that you did care or whatever, you were going to fix it. Whatever the case may be, it's definitely going to help when it comes down the pike to liability. But more importantly, I think this is a great tool for those MSPs that want to get into cybersecurity because it's a very easy step and it's 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 you know you they know their clients right so they can take their existing clients that they have and it's just an additional service that they're offering and if you contact them they probably will want this right because you know they've heard about cybersecurity on the news nowadays even compared to a couple of years ago now it's all over the place cybersecurity this happened that happened so when you say it to them it really comes across as oh wow my my, my MSP is very bit being very proactive so I really like that and uh, it's an additional way to make additional money for your services. So I think it yeah. sounds like it's a great idea. Yeah, and to, to touch on that as well, uh, the cyber liability insurance companies with their questionnaire, they always ask this is if you have URL or DNS filtering. And that's a service that you can get from almost you know any of your cybersecurity uh, companies. Like we use Acronis and it has that option, but it costs extra money. So if you put that in your report as a high risk or a medium risk, and then your client's like, oh, well, we should fix that. Well, now you're selling them an additional service so then they can make the money. And again, the cyber liability insurance companies, at least the ones that I've been dealing with in Canada, they ask that. So, you know, it, giving these reports can definitely generate revenue, not just from like your time doing them, but from the services that you could resell. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Overall, again, you just said just another area that you're protecting your, you know, your customer in. And uh, that's that's what the name of the game is nowadays. Well, this is fantastic. Is there anything else you want to throw out there? Anything we missed to talk about, you know, as far as the product? 
Uh, nothing at the moment, but the product's actively being developed. We have a lot of plans coming up. There's, uh, if, uh, you, if you subscribe to the site and you get access, we actually have a roadmap which shows exactly what we have coming up and we have a lot of good things coming. That's fantastic. All right. Well, great. So I'm going to put, uh, you know, links to the website and where they can find out more information and check out the tool and, uh, that'd be great. Okay. Well, this is fantastic. Well, thank you for your time, Steve. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Dana. All right. See you later, everybody. Bye.